Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you a quick method to create stunning custom text portraits. We'll be using what's called a word cloud to create our text. There are many word cloud websites and I included nine of them in the video's description below. The one that I prefer is called Word Art, so I'll be using that in this video. However, feel free to use any word cloud generator you want. Open a focused high resolution photo of a face. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The effect will look best if there are some shadows on one side. We want the background behind our subject to be black. If it isn't black, we'll make a selection around our subject so we can separate it from its background. There are many ways to do this, however, in most cases, I like to use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using CC 2018 or later, and are using this tool as well, click the Select Subject button. If you're using an earlier version, just drag the Quick Selection tool over your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. If you're using CC 2015.5 or later, click the Select and Mask button. If you're using an earlier version, click Refine Edge. Both of these filters will help us to refine the edges of soft or feathery areas like hair. Open the View mode. We have seven modes from which to choose. For this example, I'll use the Black and White mode since it gives us the starkest view of our selection. To adjust the size of the brush, make sure the Caps Lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush over the edges of the hair. We'll feather it a bit, increase the contrast a little, and shift the edge in. Next, we'll decontaminate the colors, which will prevent the background tones from leaching into the edges of our subject. I'll change the view mode to on black so you can see how the edge of the hair fills in once we decontaminate the colors. I'll increase the mode's opacity to pure black. Check decontaminate colors and increase the amount to 100%. To place black below our subject, control or command click the new layer icon to make a new layer below the active layer. Before we fill it with black, Check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since black is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Make the top layer active and click the adjustment layer icon. Click black and white. We'll convert our visible image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, shift click the bottom layer to make all the layers active and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Next, we'll create it as a source of the displacement map, which will bend our word cloud text around the contours of our subject's head. Click the icon at the upper right again, and this time, click Duplicate Layer. When this window pops up, click New, and let's name it Displacement. Notice it immediately created a new document of the same name. Displacement maps look best when they're blurred, so go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. I'll blur it for pixels, but you may want to adjust this amount based on your photo's size and resolution. Go to File, and Save As. Save it to your desktop for easy access as a Photoshop PSD document, and click Save. If you see this message, just click OK. Now that we saved it, we can close the document. Next, we'll create a black square shape that we'll use to fill with text. Go to File and New. Let's make the width and the height 1000 pixels each and the resolution 150 pixels per inch. The background is black. Go to File and Save As. Save it to your desktop. I'll name it Square, but you can name it whatever you like. Save it as a JPEG and click Save. When you see this window, just click OK. Now that we saved it, we can close it. 
For the purposes of this tutorial, let's use wordart.com to create our word cloud. Open your browser and type in wordart.com. Once the website opens, click Create Now. Since I already saved a couple of word clouds on it before, it opened this page for me, which listed the word clouds I saved. I'll click Create. At this point, find some text you'd like to use. Word clouds look best when there are many words in your text. You can type it in or find it elsewhere. I'll use some lyrics from a song by the Beach Boys, so I'll open my browser to the page I found earlier and drag my cursor over the lyrics. I'll press Ctrl or Command C to copy it and open back WordArt. Once you copied your text, click Import. Click inside the window and press Ctrl or Command V to paste your text into it. I suggest checking the top three parameters and then click Import Words. It prioritized words based on the number of times it appears in your text. The more times a specific word appears, the bigger that word will look in your word cloud. At the lower left, you can opt to have the words all uppercase, lowercase, or capitalized. You can also replace a word with another if you like. Click Options. You can choose to allow it to repeat the words, repeat none of them, or manually select which words you want to repeat. You can choose to maximize the words to fill available spaces, or use the size column, as well as using internet links. Click Shapes. Click Add Image, and open image from your computer. Find the black square you saved earlier and click Open. I'll make its threshold 100% and the edges 0. Notice our black square was added to shapes and is active. Open Fonts. I'll use League Gothic, but feel free to choose any font you like. Click Layout. Click the horizontal and vertical box. Click Define and drag the word amount slider all the way to the right. This will ensure the word cloud can accept up to 999 words. Drag its density all the way to the right as well, which fills our word cloud with as much text as possible. Click Style. Since our text will be pure white on black, I'll drag the color emphasis all the way to the left. Click the background color box. Pick Black, and click Apply. Drag the background image to 0%. For the word Colors, click the Custom tab and any of the colors to the right of it. Click on each color to remove it. Pick White, or you can type in 6 Fs in the hexadecimal field. Then, click Add to Palette, and close the window. If you want to see another layout using the same parameters, click Visualize again. We can adjust any of the settings. For example, to see the words in all uppercase, click Words again and click Upper. To see it, click Visualize. I think my word cloud will look better if the largest words were a bit smaller, so I'll click Options and next to Size, I'll click Use Size Column instead of Maximize. Once again, to see it, I'll click Visualize. Once you're happy with your word cloud, click Download. The standard sizes are free, while the HD versions cost money. For our purpose, the standard size is fine, so click Standard JPEG. It'll download it to your computer's default location, which in most cases is the Download folder. If you're not sure where it downloaded, Click this arrow and click Show in Folder. Minimize your browser. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer and fill it with black. Go to File and place Embedded. This import files as smart objects. Find and click your word cloud and click Place. Next, we'll resize it. At the top, Make sure the chain link icon is active, which links the width and the height of our text block. Drag the scrubby slider over the W or the H to the left or right 
to reduce or enlarge our word cloud. I suggest making it approximately this size. Then press Enter or Return. Change the Blend Mode to Lighten. You'll see why in a moment. Drag it over to one side. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T and go to a corner. Press and hold the Shift key as you rotate your text clockwise until it snaps to 90 degrees. Then press Enter or Return. Changing the Blend Mode to Lighten allows us to see the text under it. Press and hold the Shift key as you drag it to the right until they're flush with each other. Make sure there's no gap between the two. Make a copy of it and drag it down and over. Make the original word cloud active and make another copy of it. Drag it into position so it's flush with the other text, leaving no gaps. We'll convert our visible image into a smart object by making the top layer active and shift-clicking the bottom word cloud layer to make all of them active and then clicking Convert to Smart Object. We'll make a separate document of the smart object by opening the flyout list again and clicking Duplicate Layer. Open the document list and click New. Let's name it Word Clouds. Open your rectangular marquee tool and place your cursor on the corner of the text itself, making sure you don't include the black border. Drag the tool to the opposite corner of your text and again, make sure you don't include the black border. Go to Image and Crop. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. We'll make our word cloud montage into a pattern by going to Edit and Define Pattern. When you see this window, just click OK. Now that we saved the pattern, we can close it. When this window pops up, click No since we don't want to override our Photoshop document with this image. Now that we saved our text as a pattern, we can delete the layer that we used to create it by pressing the Delete key. Double-click the black layer to open its layer style window. Click Pattern Overlay. Our word cloud pattern should immediately appear. If it doesn't, open your list of patterns, scroll to the bottom, and click it. The Blend Mode is Normal, the Opacity is 100%, the Angle is 0 degrees, and I'll keep the scale at 100% for now. If you want to adjust its size, just drag the slider to the left or right. Convert this into a smart object as well, and drag the face layer to the top. Change its blend mode to multiply. We'll adjust its brightness levels by clicking the adjustment layer icon and clicking Levels. Drag the input highlights, shadows, and midtones until your portrait's brightness and contrast are to your liking. Next, we'll displace our text to conform to the contours of our subject. Make the word cloud layer active and go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. I'll displace the horizontal and vertical scales 20 each, however, you may want to adjust these amounts depending on your document's size and resolution. Tick Stretch to Fit and Repeat Edge Pixels. In case you're wondering, Wrap Around fills voids with content from the opposite edge of our image, while Repeat Edge Pixels extends the pixels along our image's edge in the direction we specify. Find the Displacement PSD file you saved at the beginning and click Open. Next, I'll show you how to make the bottom end look cut out. Make a new layer below our text by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. We'll fill it with black. You may have noticed that our colors inverted when we added the levels adjustment layer. Press control or command plus delete to fill our empty layer with the background color. Make the text layer active and press Z to open your zoom tool. Drag it over a part of the bottom of your image. To reposition it on your screen, press and hold the space bar as you drag it. Open your Polygonal Lasso tool and draw paths around the words you want to keep. The words below your path will be masked out.
connect the path with the first point you made. You know you completed the path when you see this small circle at the lower right of the polygonal lasso tool. Then zoom back out. We'll make an inverted layer mask of the selection by control clicking or command clicking the layer mask icon. Lastly, I'll show you how to add an additional displacement map to our portrait. Make a copy of your word cloud and change its blend mode to lighten. Reduce its opacity to 50%. We're going to rotate this copy, but before we do, click the chain link icon to unlink the layer with the layer mask. Doing this allows us to resize and reposition either of them independently of the other. If you see this message, it's just letting us know that the displacement filter will be temporarily turned off while we use the transform tool. Just click OK. Go to a corner and press and hold Shift as you rotate it until it snaps to 90 degrees. We'll enlarge it to cover our entire subject by going to any of the corners and pressing and holding Alt or Option as you drag it out. Then press Enter or Return. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.